Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're gonna to be showing you how to vacuum down and recharge an AC system. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to do this anytime you're going to be replacing or repairing anything in an AC system as it is a sealed unit or maybe if you have an AC leak, this all applies to that. So our first step is gonna to wanna to be to remove the refrigerant from the system. It is bad for the environment and illegal to uh, just let it expel into the environment. So you can take it to any shop and they can remove that refrigerant for you. For most likely free, they're gonna want that refrigerant so they can recycle it, they actually get paid uh, for that. So they're gonna want that refrigerant, usually it's free. So you have to go to a shop that has an evacuation machine to handle that, but again, usually it's free. And then we're gonna need to vacuum down the system and then we're gonna need to recharge it. It's all very simple and very straightforward and super doable. So you can either replace something in your AC system or just a general maintenance thing like we're doing on this truck where we're just gonna vacuum her down and replace the refrigerant and hopefully get it a few more degrees cooler while it's 110 outside. Before we go any further, we should definitely go over how exactly an AC system works. So I have on screen a nice diagram and just follow along with me. Basically, AC, we'll start on the low side before the compressor. Refrigerant is added in there on the low side. That's where we're gonna be working today. And it's fed into your AC compressor where it is compressed into a high pressure gas. It is then fed into an AC condenser where it is cooled and condensed into a high pressure liquid. It then goes through, usually there it goes through a dryer. Sometimes the dryer is elsewhere. Um, usually it's after the condenser. Um, because they want to pull as much moisture as possible out of it because moisture is going to be the enemy of the inside of your AC system due to moisture corroding and ruining everything. And then it is forced through an AC expansion valve. Sometimes it's called an orifice tube or something, but expansion valve is usually what I refer to it as. The refrigerant as a high pressure liquid is then forced through the expansion valve, basically a small hole, into the evaporator core. That causes a cooling effect. That evaporator core is what your AC fan blows across to make air cool and make it nice and cool inside of the car. It is then returned to your AC compressor and it just keeps going in cycles over and over and over again. And it's a very sealed system, so if there's any kind of leaks, it's not gonna work. And if one of these components isn't working properly, it's not gonna work and you have to replace them or if there's like a block in the line or something like that. Luckily, there's a bunch of different tools you can use to sniff out leaks. There's a, a refrigerant sniffer I've left down below in the description that works amazingly well and isn't terribly expensive. But before we get started, let's go ahead and introduce you with the equipment we're gonna be using today and get you familiar. So this is our AC gauge set. You can buy these off of Amazon, link down below in the description for pretty inexpensive and there's a low side and a high side. Before we go any further, I wanna tell you that you never ever open the high side. I even have written on here, no open, never touch this because if you were to open the high side while it was connected to a system, this high side is usually above 200 uh, PSI and the keg it's connected to when you're charging is nowhere near that. You have a chance of blowing up the keg and causing serious injury. So it's really important not to touch this. Always make sure this is nice and tight and closed because it can back feed into the keg line. So this is our low side. This is what you're going to be dealing with. So you're going to want to take this off and put it on your low side and the high side you're gonna to wanna to put on two just for metering purposes. You never actually open that valve, like I said. So like I said, this connects to the low side, this connects to the high side, but this yellow line, its end connects either to your vacuum pump or a refrigerant keg, or the little teeny tiny little guy bottles that I have linked down below in the description. Those are the ones you usually can get a hold of without any kind of special licenses or hoops to jump through because it's such a small amount of refrigerant. This is really easy and straightforward. I'll show you how to read these gauges later on in the video, but they're not very intimidating. They're very easy to work with and it's uh, really easy to put these on because the uh, fitting for the low side is actually a lot smaller than the high side. See how big the high side is? And see how small the low side is? So it's not like you could mix them up. See, this won't even go on. So it's, it's impossible to mix them up and they do that on purpose, so. And on this gauge set, there's, this is just a place to store 
your fitting so it looks all nice and stuff. So don't worry about if there's any kind of residual pressure you're worried about back feeding or something, it's not possible. So, and there's also a little slight sight glass in there so you can actually see the refrigerant being fed into the low side. This is our vacuum pump here, again, available on Amazon for not a terribly large amount of money. And you might notice that there's two thread fittings here. So the one we're gonna be working with today is the one, this one here, with the uh, bigger threads, and it's a bigger fitting in general, because that is meant for R134A, which is what we're working with, and I think this one's for R12, which is super old school. I've never even seen it, it's so old. Um, that's like for ancient stuff, it's not really around anymore, it's kind of irrelevant. So just worry about the 134A fitting, it's the bigger one. And then there's only two more things you have to worry about. Like it says here on the top, remove this before uh, using, because this is an exhaust here and you don't want it just popping off and flying out. And then when you're done, you want to replace it because you don't want anything getting down in there. And then you also want to check your oil level. So on a level surface, the oil level needs to be between the min-max lines, and you can add oil right through this port here. And usually, not always, the oil comes with the vacuum unit itself. So we're gonna be using this in just a little bit. And here is our keg of refrigerant. It is colloquially called Freon, but Freon is just a brand name. Its proper designation is R134A. I will also refer to it as just automotive refrigerant because that's what it is. It just has a valve on the top and a little threaded barb on the end that yellow line plugs into. So when it's sitting up like this, it's a liquid at the bottom and a gas at the top. So when you're filling it, you could put it in as a gas and it will work, but it's gonna take a while. So what we like to do to expedite things is to flip it on its head. And what this is going to do is put the liquid at the bottom. So the liquid is going into the system and it actually works much, much faster. And it's something you're gonna wanna do. And you can do this with the small bottles too, which is most likely what you're gonna be working with. Um, so the small bottles, you can just flip upside down and do it that way. It's actually easier with the small bottles because uh, this way you could weigh it uh, before and after while you're doing with the digital scale, like the truck we're doing, I think it's 34 ounces. You could just put 34 ounces in while you're weigh weighing the keg, but that's really impractical in a real world situation. So the little cans are kind of cool because you just buy 34 ounces worth and put it in and you're good to go. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. So before you do any kind of AC repair or any kind of uh, vacuum down type job, if there's pressure in the system, we need to relieve that. And I'm gonna show you a hyperthetical way how to do it. If you wanted to do it this way, I couldn't stop you, but it's not entirely legal due to emissions. So this is a hypothetical. Now, if you wanted to do it the legal way, you're gonna go ahead and take it to a shop and they have a special machine that collects it and typically it's free to use and they're gonna to try to talk you into some repairs, but don't let them resist that. So if you wanted to theoretically do this, you wanna find your low side, which is the bigger tube with the smaller port. And I did a whole video on how to find this bad boy. Link is down below in the description and up in the card if you wanna go watch that. So we'll go ahead and remove our dust cap here. Hold on to these. So when you're putting this connector on, make sure it's wound all the way out on the fitting there. And then lift up on the collet here. And you put it on the line. And you know you're on the line because you're gonna see this needle jump. And then when you screw this fitting in, We know we're making a good connection because the needle jumped there, so we know the pressure is in the gauge. So you can see on our low side, you, uh, you know, the truck's off. Its ambient pressure is a bit over 100 uh, psi in there, which is a bit high. You kind of want it right around 90, but it is a really warm day. It's about 105 here right now. So the warmer the ambient, the more pressure you're going to get on the low side. So now, if you didn't want to take it to a mechanic, you could theoretically could loosen this fitting right here and the refrigerant would escape. It's not technically legal, and it's not good for the environment, but you could do it that way. Otherwise, take it to a mechanic and they have an evaporator machine that uh, collects it and is able to be recycled. And nine times out of 10, if you're doing AC work, typically nine times out of 10, there isn't any pressure in there anyway because it's all escaped into the atmosphere due to some sort of leak. All right, so we went and got our AC system uh, relieved of its pressure via local shop. They did for free like I thought they would. And we can see that 
uh, we have it reconnected to our low side and the gauge is at zero, so there is no more pressure in this AC system. So now we can move on to vacuuming it down. So this is our refrigerant vacuum pump. This is absolutely essential for doing AC repairs yourself. You can buy these on Amazon for reasonably inexpensive. I've left a link down below in the description for that. Before we get started, I wanna mention that while we have ours properly oiled, you can see that oil if you lay it down uh, flat there and it has a min max. You just wanna make sure you have the correct oil in there. Usually the pump comes with oil, so don't worry too much about that, but it won't come in it. You'll have to add it yourself through a little port here. Before we get started though, it's always a good idea to remove the cap like it says to on the exhaust side. And what I like to do too is turn it on and make sure that it works. And this one does so that, you know, removes any kind of mystery out of the equation. So now what we can do is take our yellow hose or center hose here off our gauges and attach it to our refrigerant vacuum pump. We'll just make sure that's on nice and snug like that. We can move on. All right, so the next thing we can do is open our low side here just like that, and now we can turn on our vacuum pump. And we're gonna watch that vacuum. See how it's going down? We want this needle all the way down to 30. So we have total vacuum within the system. And we're gonna have our vacuum pump hooked up here for about 20 to 30 minutes that neighborhood because what's happening under this vacuum is any kind of moisture inside the system is being uh, evaporated and uh, evacuated via our vacuum pump here. So we're gonna let this do its job for about 20 to 30 minutes or so. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes or so. And what we can do is close our low side valve here, make sure that's nice and tight, shut off our vacuum pump here. And what we're gonna do next is just keep an eye on this needle for about five to 10 minutes. And if this needle moves at all, basically you're losing vacuum. And what does that mean? It means that there's a leak somewhere in the AC system, most likely where you did a repair because maybe you got an O-ring messed up or you didn't clean something or something's just plain loose or maybe another leak sprang up somewhere. You will have to find that leak before the system will take a charge. And if you can't find a leak, you're gonna have to click on my leak detection video and use an AC sniffer after you've charged it and that will uh, be leaking out and a AC detecting sniffer will be able to tell you exactly where that's coming from. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes or so and we can see that our needle has stayed right at 29 inches of mercury, which means that it's holding vacuum, it does not have a leak and we can move on. So there are two ways you can use your refrigerant keg here. You can have it right side up like this. That means that the gas at the top of the canister is going to be feeding your refrigerant system, which you can do, it just takes longer. What we're gonna do is attach our hose to the keg and flip it over and that's gonna be using a liquid at that point, which goes a little bit quicker and uh, saves some time. And that's really the professional's way of doing it. So we're gonna disconnect our yellow line here. It might make a little uh, sucking sound. There we go. We're gonna attach that to our keg, just like we did our vacuum. Make sure that's on nice and snug. And then, so that's what that looks like. And then we can open up this valve here, just like that. And then we're gonna flip it on its head. And note that if you're using the little cans, you can do the exact same thing, just on a smaller scale. So, when we undid the yellow line and attached it to our keg, air got in there, it's no longer vacuum. So what you can do is just loosen it slightly like this. There we go, and that will flush any kind of air out of there. So now there's just refrigerant in this line. So now we can hook up our high side. You can do this at basically any time. You could do this at the beginning or right now. Uh, and we're gonna do this uh, basically for metering purposes. Never ever open the high side on the gauges. There we go. And we know the high side is connected because the high side needle dropped down to zero. So the next thing we do is charge our system and the way we're gonna do that is opening our blue valve here. Never open the red valve. I even have it labeled there. No open, never ever open this. Make sure, actually make sure it's nice and tight so it's not uh, any kind of leak in there. And what we're gonna do is just open this. And what this is going to do is charge our system to the pressure that's inside of the keg. So the AC system, if you turn the truck on right now, the AC compressor isn't gonna click on, nothing's gonna work, the pressure system switches aren't gonna be active because it thinks the system's empty, which it is. So it's not gonna work to protect itself. So you need to bring up that pressure enough to trick the system into working, and that is right about where uh, the keg pressure is. So we're actually to basically the charge limit right now, 
um, to trick the comp AC compressor to turning on. You can actually watch the little liquid going in through the window just there. So you can even hear the liquid being forced into the system. And when you can't hear that anymore, like right now I can tell you it's really quiet. There's no more force going in there because all the pressure has equalized. Now what we can do is close our valve and turn the truck on. So when we turn the truck on, you're gonna notice that these are going to differ. The low side's gonna go down and the high side's gonna go up. This means the AC compressor is activated. The AC system is working as it's supposed to. Now what we can do is open our low side very slowly and add that refrigerant in very, very slowly. And you wanna have the AC system in the truck or car on maximum with the recirculation on, AC on, everything cold as it can go. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab a garden hose and spray it across to the front of the condenser here. That's going to simulate air going through it. We're going to get a nice, real good charge out of it. See, as I hose it down, you can see the high, prep, the high side go down in pressure. You can even hear the compressor click off, basically signaling that it needs more refrigerant. Well, there's two ways to add refrigerant uh, to an AC system. Most cars with an AC system will have a sticker like on this truck it says 34 ounces so if you're buying the little cans 34 ounces is all you need to buy you put it in you're good. But if you have a big keg like we do basically you're going to want to eyeball the high side pressure. It's going to want to be somewhere between 200 and 250. It also helps to grab the low side tube and if that feels cold stop. Or if you have somebody in the car and they can feel the air coming out of the vents and it's cold stop. More refrigerant isn't going to make it more cold. So we're going to slowly add some of this in here. And we're going to watch the high side. We don't want it getting beyond 250 there, especially on this real hot day. So I turned it, uh, I turned the uh, low side off and I'm going to have somebody inside raise the idle a little bit for me. It's going to help this situation out. I can touch the evap tube that's coming out of the evaporator and it's pretty cold. You can also go in the truck and feel it and the AC is pretty cold. And you don't want to go beyond uh, 250 here. And we know that once it's out in the real world, because we wetted the condenser here, it's going to get hotter and that's going to climb and we don't want it to go any further than around 250. So we're going to stop here. So now we can remove the low side, making sure that our low side is nice and closed. Go ahead and remove this. And we're doing this while the truck is on because the compressor is active and it won't blow off a bunch of pressure on us. See how nice and easy that was? Now we can turn the truck off. There we go. So with the truck off, you can see the pressure is equalizing in the system, so that'll make taking the high side off a lot easier. Now we can take our high side off with relatively low pressure. Just like that. And do not forget to replace your dust caps. Those are absolutely essential. Now our job is complete. We can get those AC gauges on out of there. So here's a pro AC tip. Get a garden hose and clean off your condenser for maximum cooling efficiency. Now we can close our keg. There we go and uh, make sure that's nice and stored in a clean place for next time. So that is how to vacuum down and recharge an AC system. Basically how to service an AC system, which is really important in these hotter months here. Or if you need to make a repair to your AC, this is something you absolutely have to do. It will not work unless you vacuum down and recharge. Just because those pressure differentiations is how the AC system works and that's how you get cold. So think about next time you're using some hairspray or something, think about your AC system. When you're using hairspray under a, under a compressed condition and you let it evaporate out, you get a cooling effect. That's basically how your AC system works. So thank you so very much for watching. Uh, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.